my man Passion for uh, Music on Instagram asked me, how did I go about learning all the notes on the bass? And so in this video, I'm going to share that with you. Check it out. Cause just to show as the sun gives way to the moon, just to show as the gray gives way to the blue, I'm gonna ride to the heavens child inside my room. Hey man, what's good? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, go on and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when the next video comes out. I missed you last week. Um, I've been hella sick, um, so I'm just kind of getting back to myself here. Let me fix this this inner monitor thing, whatever. Anyway, um, so uh, I'm gonna try to keep this video short but uh, informative. Um, so Passion for Music asked me how what I did to to go about learning all the notes on the bass and. Um, I made a little bit of a list, but I may ramble a little bit, and that's okay. Right off the top, I did not, um, and I'm not a huge fan of arbit you know, arbitrary exercises that have you kind of traversing the net, calling out uh, note names. I know that works for some people. That didn't really work for me. Um, and one of the reasons is that uh, when I picked up the bass, like I, I, I assume that when you picked up the bass, you wanted to play it. You didn't want to, you know, do like parlor tricks and, you know, and, you know, when you go on a gig or something like that, nobody's going to ask you to, you know, kind of randomly call out names on the bass. Now, if you're doing a gig where you're reading and I'll get to that, um, uh, that's another thing. But then you have to know the notes, where the notes are in a, in a functional way, in my opinion. So anything I say is like a way, not the way, right? It's just a way. So the first thing for me that helped my knowing where the notes are on the bass, but just my overall musical understanding is the, the basics, the natural notes, the natural notes of the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Starts over at A again. No matter where you start that pattern, that pattern is going to be the same, right? So if I start B, C, D, E, F, G, I'm back to A again. Okay, so that's basic. If you look at a piano, that's all the white keys. A lot of pianos start with the note C, C, D. If you only had white keys on the piano, it would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way up, right? So that's the natural order of things. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, which is which will, you'll see why this is helpful in a second, is that there's a half step in between the notes B and C and E and F. So if you look at a piano, you'll notice if you start on C, in between C and D, there's a black key. In between D and E, there's a black key. But in between E and F, there is no black key. In between F and G, there's a black key. Between G and A, there's a black key. Between A and B, there's a black key. But then once you get to B and C, there is no black key. How does that apply to the bass? So, and again, I'm, I'm explaining my journey and, and you know how this worked out for me over time. Um, I, I would have said, I would have started by saying, you know, well, how did you learn the notes on the bass? Well, I just did. And that's a sort of flippant answer that doesn't really help anybody. But I will say that um, I looked at notes on the bass just like I looked at, you know, meeting a new person, right? So I meet that person for the first time and they tell me, um, hi, my name is Jane, right? Now, these days I try to make a, a point to say, hey, Jane, I'm Ted, right? Um, but the point is that if I see that person again, I may not remember their name. That's uh, Jane, right? Now, after I see Jane a few times, every time I see Jane, I could see Jane from way across the street and I know that that's Jane. Or I could just be thinking, you know, about Jane, which sounds kind of weird, but you know what I'm saying. You know, I could I could just say, you know, Jane, and I, I imagine that Jane looks like X, Y, and Z, right? So same thing with the notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So still trying to get all this stuff loose. You know what I mean? So how do I apply that to the bass? When I first started out, I, one of the first things I learned was don't play your bass out of tune. The bass is tuned in fourths. First string or the fourth string is E and a fourth up from E is A. Now, check this out. You're gonna, one, when you start counting, that's always gonna be the note you start with. So, if I say E, this is E, yeah? E, what's the next note in the musical alphabet? It's F, it's just like the regular alphabet, right? What's the next note in the alphabet? It's G. What's the next note in the alphabet? Is A. So that's one, two, three, four. E, A, D, and G. So that's the that's the starting point, right? That's basic. E A D G. That's how a four string bass is, is tuned. Um, and I know for some of you, oh, you know, more experienced guys, that's 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 you know, skip past that. But let's take this concept of what I said before and apply it to the bass. So the natural notes, if, if that's a natural note, E, and a half step, if there's a half step in between E and F, then that note must be F, right? <clears throat> so um, the nut we can call like, we can call, you know, some basses have like a zero fret. So they'll have a fret kind of right there. Um, but more often than not, you just have the nut there. So let's just say open E, the next note is F. So if there's a whole step in between F and G, then that must mean that I skip that note and I go to that note. So there's G. If there's a whole step in between G and A, now let me talk about this fret marker real quick. Um, I didn't trip on the fret markers until much later. You know, I started playing bass when I was about 13. Um, and I didn't really register the fret markers for, for a while. You know, some people <laughs> get that right away. For me, they were just dots. I didn't know what they were. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So E, F, G. Well, if the, if, if the next natural note is A, there's A. Whole step in between A and B, there's B. Now what you'll notice is that on the E string, the first dot is F, I'm sorry, G. The second dot is A. The next dot is B, so there's a half step in between B and C, remember? So B, C, whole step in between C and D, whole step between D and E. Now, once I get to the 12th fret, everything starts over again. So we won't even worry about this stuff up, up past the 12th fret right now, because you can kind of figure that out on your own. But One of the things, like I said, I didn't do a whole bunch of arbitrary exercises, but this was one of those things where I got A, B, not A, B, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Starts over again, right? Um, and the most helpful exercise I'm going to show, not exercise, but the most helpful bit of information I'm going to give you is going to come in just a second, so bear with me. So the next string is A. Now... If I'm only dealing with the natural notes right now, I already know from knowing that the, the musical alphabet that in, betwe in between A and B is the interval of a whole step. So we already figured it out on between E and F that that's a half step. So if this is, if the next string is A, then a whole step is B, yeah? Between B and C is a half step. There's C, between C and D is a whole step. D, E, between E and F is a half step. Between uh, F and G is a whole step. And between G and A is a whole step. And look at there, we're right at the halfway mark of that string. So the whole pattern starts over again. A, whole step, B, half step, C. Let's do the same thing on the D string. D. We need a whole step in between D and E, right? D, E, half step in between E and F, whole step in between F and G, whole step in between G and A, whole step in between 
uh, A and B, half step in between B and C, and don't worry about the fingerings I'm using right now because that doesn't really matter. So, so there's a C from C and D, G, whole step A, whole step B, C, half step, D, whole step, E, whole step, half step to F, then from F to G, whole step. And then we're the, right, right there where we started. So that's kind of taking the natural order of things, right? Um, when we add chromatics or, <clears throat> excuse me, inharmonics, chromatics, inharmonics, same thing. When we add that, I'm going to show you that when, just as an exercise, I'm going to go, when I go up, I'm going to call them sharps. When I go down, I'm going to call them flats. And that's only, that's only a geographical thing right now. Whether I would call them sharps or flats in a different context depends on the context. So, um, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So, E, F. In between F, if I raise a note by one half step, I'm sharpening it, sharpening it, right? So, E, F. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, because there's a half step there, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Now when I go down, I'll call E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F. Do the same thing on the A string. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. A, A flat, G, G flat, uh, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A. Now, I'll let you do the other two strings on your own. But now, check this out. So, sort of the next thing that um, helped me out was understanding the... the, the the cycle of force or the circle of force and fifths, and then understanding the pattern that created the major scale. Again, this is a journey. It's not, you know, this is just one way. It's not the way. So, um, you know, it's going to help some, it's going to confuse others. And um, if I can explain it even more, I will if you leave comments below. Um, but uh, this is just you know some kind of information. So you can actually pull up you can pull up a, a diagram of a circle of fourths or a circle of fifths online. You could do it right now if you want and, and look along. So if I if I look at the the circle of fourths and fifths as like a clock, I'm gonna call it the circle of fifths right now. Okay. So C is at twelve o'clock. The key of C has no sharps, no flats. So if I start on the note C, what I get is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the pattern that creates, because there's a half step in between B and C and a half step in between E and F, the pattern that we get is whole step, whole step between D and E, half step in between E and F, whole step in between F and G, whole step in between G and A, whole step in between B and C, I'm sorry, whole step in between uh, A and B, half step in between B and C. So what we get is, there's our major scale. Now, <clears throat> if you're new, you won't necessarily start off playing that's a horrible shift. You won't start off necessarily playing that, but most people start off playing this. Okay. Um, again, this is sort of a, a longer meandering way to, to do this, but I'm learning this in context. I'm learning this in context, not arbitrarily right um 
So if I see, if I know that the key of C, that's my starting note. Then I start naming, I just start naming these notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now I know that that is the pattern that creates a whole, I'm sorry, that's the pattern that creates a major scale. If you don't have that pattern, you don't have a major scale. Batteries running low. So let me wrap this up. So now if I go a fifth above C, oh, let me, let me back up real quick. So I know that this pattern is gonna create a major scale. No matter where I play it, that, int that interval pattern, that pattern, that, that series of intervals, whole steps and half steps, is going to create the sound of a major scale. So if I play C here, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? C, D, E, F, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now when you learn different fingerings, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I'm saying it, I'm singing it, I'm putting it into a pattern, I'm getting that sound in my head so I know that that sound, if I have something different than that, I don't have a major scale, right? So that's the key of C. And you may take, you may take the key of C and find all the ways, and don't worry about the fingering so much right now. You know, investigate the neck, right? Investigate the neck, say what the names of the notes are. C, whole step, that's D. I need another whole step, right? E, I need a half step. F, G, A, B, C, yeah? So let's go from C. If we go up five, right, we get to the key of G. So C, remember we start with the note, we're, we're, we count one as the note we're starting with. So C, D, E, F, G. That's the next key. Now watch what happens if I hold it. Bruh. Let's try that again. Watch what happens if I only play, um, if I only play the natural notes. G. I'm gonna use that same pattern, but I'll only play the natural notes. C, I'm sorry, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I no longer have a major scale because I have whole step, whole step, half step, so far so good, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. That is not a major scale. I need whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So this note becomes F sharp. We raise that, we raise that F sharp. We raise that F to an F sharp. So from there, now I'm understanding G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now F sharp, if that's F sharp, that must be F sharp, right? Now I know this is long. This is, you know, this is gonna be a long video and I know that, you know, there may be some easier types of ways, but what happened with, with that, I know this is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. Lost my train of thought. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Right? When I start getting a piece of music, I get a piece of music in the key of G, I don't start arbitrarily just going all around the neck. If I'm in the key of G, that piece of music, all of those notes are gonna, I'm talking about just to start, those notes are gonna exist in that pattern. They're gonna exist in this pattern. Right? So it's it's kind of a it's a, it is a it's a slower process, but the emphasis is on uh, function and not just you know arbitrarily being able to call out the the names and the notes and where they are and all that. That's what worked for me. So um, you know, a, one one great book 
if you want to get your you know get your reading thing together is 30 etudes the samando book um 30 etudes it starts off in the key of c so of course you need to know rhythms and stuff like that but you know things are laid out in a very logical way it's an etude it's a study so you just start associating the names with the sounds and and where they are um so this is getting super long. This is, I'm talking for like 20 minutes now. So um, that's just, you know, that's one part of my journey. I wanted to share with, uh, with uh, my man Passion for Music off of Instagram and also um, for you here at YouTube. So dig it, man. That's one of the ways you can start learning the notes on the bass, you know, Know the natural notes, right? Start one string at a time and just start exploring. But take the time. That's the problem with, sort of the problem with, uh, with the age we live in with YouTube and all those things. I think a lot of people are not, I shouldn't say that, that was so general. But sometimes we get into this space where we don't just investigate. And you're going to get more benefit from just investigating, sitting down, looking at your instrument, looking at the neck and just you know experimenting and 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 like i said if that's g that must be g sharp if that's g sharp then that must be a right so now every time i see that note i know that's an a i don't even think about it that's an a right now am i gonna like put on a metronome and start saying a a, a you know where all that stuff is not me not me that works for some people, and if that works for you, great. It doesn't really work for me. So, but I just know where you know. I just know where they are when I when I need to know where they are. I don't just like call them out anyway. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just glad to have a have my voice back and and to be making a video after a, after about a week. So, um, have a good day. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe bell icon. I'll see you in the next video. Peace, two fingers.